Hello, we are Day of Destruction TV. To, uh, today we have a special guest. Uh, his name is Marco Piquet. Of course, you will know him. Hello, Marco. Nice to have you here in Hamburg. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, I feel fine again uh, to be back in Hamburg, as usual. So uh, I'm uh, here with uh, some fighters from me uh, who have to fight today in Hamburg. So uh, I'm only the coach. So I don't have to fight. I'm relaxing, chilling, and guiding my fighters. So yeah. it's going to be fine. Yes, but you have more than 100 fights. Uh, you live in the Netherlands, but you are not born there. What can you tell us about your roots? Uh, my roots is from I'm from Suriname, and at young age I go to Holland, uh, study living over there, and then I came in contact with the sport Muay Thai, kickboxing. And I went, I was walking by a, a gym, and then I saw in the window, I heard some yelling, some strange yelling, some ah, kicking, boxing. And then I looked and I thought, huh, I don't know this. So I went inside, talked to the trainer and asked him, can I do also uh, a lesson? And he said, it's cool, no problem. I want to learn it. Okay, I got beat, but... I still laughing and I thought, this is something for me. And I went on with training and here I am now. Yeah, and uh, now we have, uh, as we told already, more than 100 fights. Yeah. Uh, what is a normal day of Marco Pique? Normal day, stand up, um, bring my kids to school, uh, then go to the gym, teach, train, um, give some information uh, to clients if they want to know something. And then at 10 o'clock in the evening, I finish. Then I go home, relaxing, sleeping. Tomorrow, same again. Yes, but you are also traveling around the world, yeah? Also. So I got a busy life. Uh, I'm enjoying it because I meet a lot of people from around the world. And that's what I love. Traveling, meet people, doing my own thing. And yeah, that's me. And uh, you have a nickname, which is the Sniper. Yeah. What can you tell us about this? The nickname, the Sniper, is in the beginning of my career, um, we were brainstorming, like, uh, what kind of name should fit at Marco Piquet? And I didn't know. So a lot of friends, they saw a couple of fights, and they called me the Sniper. So I thought, okay, the Sniper sounds good. So, but it fits also in my character in the ring, because if I see the spot and I hit him one time, it's mostly a knockout, a clean 100% hit. So, and that's the sniper also do. Yes, but uh, there's also a team called uh, the Team Sniper. What yeah. can you tell us about us about your team? My team is awesome. So I like, got a lot of I got like 10 fighters now, and they all like. Um, training hard and they want to all uh, they have a goal in the sport they want to achieve something and they see me fight they see me struggle they see me working hard and they want this life also so I tell them it's not easy to come and hold on like hold on a level because I'm now like 35 but I'm fighting almost my whole life but and it's difficult to come here and hold it to become champion is nothing to hold the championship that's the whole thing and i talk a lot uh, about that with my fighters and it's not only training but also coaching mental coach uh, we are friends we are a small family so my team is a uh, hardcore yes you are a family guy yeah, yeah. Um, we got to know each other at Day of Destruction 7 yeah. when you were visiting Hamburg for uh, the Day of Destruction promotion mm -hmm. and uh, you were beating Dima Weimar at, uh, at this day in 2013. Uh, what was special for you at this, at this day? Uh, it was a special day because Dima Weimar was, uh, is here in Hamburg the famous guy and the best guy in Hamburg I think or one of the, one of the best guys in Germany. And I saw some fights from him, and he was a good technical fighter, a real K1 fighter. But 
yeah, my style is difficult to fight. So I'm like a Muay Thai mix K1 fighter. So it was hard for him to to beat me, and it didn't work out bad. It didn't work out good for him. So in my advantage, I won the fight easy. Yeah. Um, yes, you uh, you fought big names, yeah, yeah. like uh, like Burkow or Nicky Holtzkin. Is there an opponent that was really really hard for you? The Thai guys. Maybe guy. the hardest. The Thai guys were the hardest, really, because Thai fighters are like uh, they have a different style. They are real Muay Thai, and they are training like two times a day, really hard. And me too for a fight also, but over there it's like. Uh, their lifestyle for me is also training but you have other things beside but Thai fighters are like yes they have a crazy style and you have to be careful if you fight with them because they're very slink with the elbow but I start to learn the style and start to um, uh, teach uh, uh, how you say it? I start to feeling them and that's how I became better and better in the Muay Thai. Yes, and you prefer normally the Muay Thai style yeah. and the world's changing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. K K1 is now more famous. Uh, do you have an explanation for this? K1 is famous because they, yeah, people like to see action and in Muay Thai there's also action but you have five rounds of three minutes so you can build the tension up And in K1, it's like from round one, when the bell goes ding ding, you have to go because you have to score points. And the more time you can build it up, like in the second round or third round, you're gonna go up. But that's different, and especially with the elbows, you cannot go inside like in K1 style. Just come in, pop, 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 because. You can catch your elbow and it's gonna be really nasty if you get one. So, but I'm lucky I didn't get them like some guys are getting them. Yeah. Um, you saw the fight, uh, Buakau against He Long, yeah. which uh, was uh, just one week ago. We uh, we were we were there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had, uh, we were there at the wing also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know He Long also. Uh, yeah. He is he is your weight class. You, what do you think about uh, fighting with him? Uh, for me, it's gonna be a, a, a challenge. It's gonna be a very big challenge because Ilong is a, he's a very difficult fighter. He got a strange style, and if I gotta fight him, it's not gonna be a nice fight. So I have to fight hard, and I have to fight, I think, a little bit street, because he just kick and punch. He don't make combinations. He want to hurt you and. And then he goes for the knockout, but if you fight with him, it's not going to be a nice fight. It's not going to be a technical fight. Let me say it like that. Yeah. So. Yes, you're, you're going to, to China in, uh, in August yeah, yeah, to fight a Chinese guy, not you long, but another one. Yeah. And uh, the Chinese guys are really special because yeah. they are really hard. Yeah? yeah, they have a big heart. They are big fighters. And over there, is, uh, the, uh, the kickboxing is growing very fast. So the guys are training really hard, also with Thai fighters. So it's a big market over there. But the Chinese guys, they have a big heart. You're not going to beat them easily, no. Yeah. You and Ralf Stege from uh, Day of Destruction uh, Event Management know each other since many years. And yeah. um, what can you tell us about this cooperation? Uh, Ralf is a good friend, we became good friends. He invited me once with a fight uh, with Dima Weimar. Mm -hmm. And after that, we just uh, keep contact on Facebook or on phone, so we call each other. And the cooperation is good. So if I need fighters, if he needs fighters, we call each other first. And then we let all fighters fight over there or over there. So it's all good. So in this sport, you have to respect each other. So, And that's how you earn the friendship. Yeah, Ralf and uh, some fighters of him have has already been to Suriname, which yeah. is a really nice country. Yeah. I had uh, the pleasure to be there also. See. Yeah, uh, Suriname is in South America. I yeah, tell South you, America. most of the people think okay, it must be somewhere in Asia, but it's not. No, uh, Suriname is uh, is nearby Brazil. 
it's like Brazil is here and Suriname is here. Yeah. So it's right on the Brazil. So Marco, what are your plans for the future? You, are, you told us you are 35 now. Yeah. Uh, you think a little bit of retiring, yeah. not too fast, but maybe in some years. And yeah. what's going on? I think now I'm going to retire in like one or two years. Uh, then I have see everything, done everything, and uh, reach everything, I hope. I got one more belt to catch, and that's the green belt, the WBC. Uh, um, I want one shot for that one, and then I finish. And then I'm going to have a, a gym that I already have with my, three, uh, with my two other brothers, and lessons, guiding, traveling, just name it, and I'm doing it. Yes, today you're here with your little, let's call him little brother because he's actually taller than you yeah. with Sergio yeah. and uh, he's also an upcoming star in yeah. the heavyweight class, yeah? yeah? And you train uh, together and uh, yeah. traveling around the world, yeah? yeah? All the best for you both, yeah? For you, your yeah. team Thank and you. uh, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Is there anything you want to tell to your friends? Uh, my friends, uh, my German friends are really special for me. Because in the beginning, I fought a lot here in Germany, so the Germans know me already. But what I want to tell them, just follow me and I will be here, yeah, often and often. So, you're going to see me a lot. Yes, this is Marco Piquet, Marco the Sniper Piquet. We are the Destruction TV. Stay tuned. See you later. Bye.